Now will attorney David Seamus please come forward. The Board of Trustees of Bristol Community College awards the honorary associate degree in humane letters to a David Seamus Esquire. David Seamus Esquire, ladies and gentlemen. Class of 2013. <laughs> Class of 2013. <laughs> I cannot tell you the honor and the privilege that I have of being here today and watching each and every one of you with your own personal story stand up and declaim to this entire place all around you what you have achieved, what you have accomplished. And what I want to do right now, uh, in honor of you and all of the people that made this very, very possible, given the heat, is deliver a few remarks for you that and someone needs to time me. If it goes over six minutes, the gong better go off. <laughs> President Spraga, thank you for what you do here and your leadership. Members of the board, thank you for your service to this school and thank you to the entire BCC community. And I mean the entire community. The faculty, the campus officers, the maintainers, the groundskeepers, the professional staffs, the administrators, everyone who each and every day makes this place a jewel of southeastern Massachusetts. Thank you for what you do and the part of this day. Congratulations to every parent, to every grandparent, to every spouse, to every child, to every loved one, because the guidance and the encouragement, the support, and yes, sometimes money, that you provided to the students is central to their success. This day belongs to the class of 2013, but it's also your day because let me just be very clear, there is not one person who succeeds alone. No one. Congratulations to you for what you did. As a child of southeastern Massachusetts who grew up in Taunton and who is just influenced by the values that everybody in this tent shares, the community, the family, the faith, the belief in education, I just want you to indulge me for one second. Each day I have the honor of entering the White House to serve the President of the United States in this country. Each day when I walk through those gates, each day when I walk into the West Wing of the White House and have the opportunity to serve. Let me just remind you of one thing that I feel. I feel deeply rooted to the people who helped me get there. Because I stand on the shoulders, as do you, of all of the people who made this day for you possible in my entrance each day to serve my nation possible. When my parents who are here today came from Portugal in 1969. They came, with, they came with very little money, but with an abundance of hope for a better life for themselves and for the children that they did not yet have. Through hard work and sacrifice and always putting their two children ahead of themselves, through injuries and illness, through loss of loved ones, and longing for that country that they left behind and the values, they wrote an American story. A story that's rooted in family and in work and in education. In graduates of 2013, much like your parents and grandparents and loved ones are feeling today, when I walked across the stage, when my sister walked around the stage to grab the diploma, it was an achievement for me, but the sense of accomplishment and love was even bigger for them. So graduates, please remember, 
You stand on the shoulders of so many people who helped to lift you up, but as of today, you begin to write your own American story. Today, you have unlimited possibility. Today, you will take your life wherever you want it to go. Today, you, after two years or three years or five years or 10 years or 15 years, whether you are the first in your generation to go to school, or someone who after a long career decided to come back and learn a little bit more. It is time for you to write your story and listen to this. What a time to begin. You are living in an era of the most dramatic change that humanity has ever seen. Changes that create tremendous opportunities and possibility for growth. Changes that live and lift entire communities out of poverty and disease, but changes that sometimes cause us to forget what we're truly about and what is the essence of success. Think about this. In the next 10 years, personalized medica medicine that's based on your genes is going to give you the ability to cure diseases people never thought of and expand lives beyond what's imaginable. Think about this. An individualized education will allow teachers at all levels and you to use technology throughout your life to address your needs. Think about this, self-driving cars. This is not a Jetsons fantasy, because Google has already designed it, are gonna transform the way we go places. Think about this, 3D printers will allow each one of you to come up with an idea, design it, make it, and sell it. Think about this, you are the first generation that truly has all of the knowledge of the world at your fingertips. That has never happened before. You stand on the shoulders of so much opportunity and possibility. Through social media, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, your friends from high school, your friends from college, and the friends for the rest of your life will remain connected in a way that we were never able to do before. This is not some fantastic dream. This is today. And the opportunities and knowledge before you are greater than any that we've ever known. But there's a professor at the University of Massachusetts who said the following, we're living a digital life, but we are in an analog body. And the changes that are occurring are happening so fast that this unlimited opportunity also translates into the following. How many of you have felt the 24 seven cycle that just never ends? How many of you have experienced the fact that there really aren't weekends anymore? How many of you have felt that it's always nonstop? And though, even though you are always connected, somehow the richness of connection falls apart. So with all the opportunity and technology, all the advancements and promises ahead of you, how do you make sure that the intensity of each day, your packed schedule, the long work days, the constant digital communication, don't lose you, cause you to lose touch with all of the people around you who help to make you what you are. Years ago, my old boss, the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick, used to say to people around him something very, very simple. And this is what I want everybody to take away from, you, from me today. Remember who you are and what you represent. Remember who you are in what you represent. Time and again, I have fallen back on that simple, powerful statement. It's a reminder of the values and the family and the sacrifice, the friends who have stood by me in my sense of community. So today, after you walk off this stage, please find your family, find your friends, and hug them deeply. And I am not talking about one of those man hugs that are awkward, you know, and you pat yourself a couple of times, cherish the moment. Find a professor or another member of this community and thank them for the amazing insight, the words of encouragement, or that tough lecture that they gave you once that kept you going. Think about the friend who didn't finish, who hasn't finished. Think about the people you went to high school with who never had a chance that you do today. And most importantly, think about who you are in what you represent because I promise you no matter how hard you work or how much you achieve 
Living by your core values is where you will find success. That is the thing that matters. Remember who you are in what you represent. And for those of us who've been raised in places like Taunton and Attleboro and Fall River and New Bedford and all of the places in between, we see this value in community. We see the commitment of our friends and our neighbors and the volunteers and we understand that work is not about how much you make, but about the dignity that it brings and what it does to your family. We have seen this in small ways throughout our lives, but recently I want everybody to think about what was most important because we saw it in a very, very big way. This past Patriots Day in Boston, I was sitting in my office in Washington and we saw where the hatred of a couple of people shook an entire community. And I, like all of you, were moved to tears, but here's why I was moved to tears. The suffering and the loss was immediate, but the self-sacrifice, the simple humanity and the goodness that we saw moved me the most. In those few moments after that explosion, we were all reminded of what was most important. Here's what we saw. Men and women who were running towards an explosion and not away from it. That's what we saw. A doctor who finished the marathon and continued to run to the emergency room so he could provide care. That is what we saw. First responders who fulfill their duty with little concern for their safety and total concern for yours. That's what we saw. We saw a community that opened up its doors and opened their bedrooms and kitchens and entire homes to people who couldn't go home. We saw an entire region shut down so that law enforcement could do their job and bring people to justice. That is what we saw. That is who we are. That is what we represent. And don't ever lose that in a day like today. <laughs> Class of 2013, in those five days, in those five days, we saw a response to tragedy that showed that kindness, compassion, bravery, sacrifice is who we are. Throughout your lives and careers, too often we're going to get carried away and maybe elevated with simply focusing on who's the wealthiest, who's the most famous, who are the people with the coolest jobs. But what we saw in Boston and what we saw two weeks ago in Moore, Oklahoma, is the true definition of a meaningful and successful life. It's that simple idea that at the end of the day, like your parents and grandparents and friends show to you, I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper, we are all in this together, no one succeeds alone. So class of 2013, today is a celebration of your achievement. Because of your efforts and support of so many, your doors are open just a little bit wider. You've made your family proud, and all of your dreams lay in front of you. Today, you begin anew. All commencement is is a fancy word for beginning. You've been enriched by what you've been taught at this place. You're loved by the family and friends who've helped you. You're excited by the possibility that awaits, a little nervous about the challenges and change that will come but all of us are reinvigorated by your American story and the fact that you get to begin to write it today so you too can pass a legacy on to your children and grandchildren and their children so that in 30 years you are standing here delivering this address, accepting the degree, enriching your community and making of your life everything that you've possibly dreamed of doing. And if there's one simple thing that I want you to remember from the person, me, whose name you will very quickly forget, justifiably, as you leave here, is please remember at different times during your life to just stop. Remember who you are and what you represent. Because when I look around this room and I see the faces of success and I see the work that you have put into it, I know that you are a continuation of the American story that we've been telling for hundreds of years and will continue to tell. Congratulations to you. May you have all of the success and dreams and you fulfill your dreams.
Attorney David Seamus, ladies and gentlemen, for an aspiring award. Faculty. His 39 years as an educator at the college.